Employment spokesperson for the Labor Party, Brendan O'Connor. He joins me here live in the Melbourne studio. Thanks for your company. Good morning, Peter. Let's go straight to this issue of, of paid parental leave. Uh, Labor's opposition to the removal of the so-called double dipping, you would have heard some of the figures that Paul just referred to there. It feels a little bit like the reverse of what happened when there was the argument over Tony Abbott's original scheme. The Abbott government was saying it needs to be generous, here are all the reasons why. Now the Labor Party, which was then saying, hang on, there's all these incredibly high paid women on six figure salaries that will get this large uh, amount of paid parental leave, now those women are going to get the equivalent when they double dip, is that right? Well, look, I think uh, the government's gone from one extreme to the other. I mean, you had a point where they had a Rolls-Royce scheme, which we said was uh, uh, unaffordable, uh, and they've gone from that to actually claiming that women that uh, may have uh, a collective uh, agreement that allows for some entitlements to pay parental leave that intersects with the, the government scheme are double-dippers and rorters. Now, we don't accept that. We'd say... Uh, that uh, this scheme uh, is a very, uh, that is the government scheme is a, is a minimum scheme, it's uh, very modest by international standards and therefore we think the idea that you would pare back or strip away or deny the rights of workers to receive parental leave under in industrial instruments is unfair. I mean you look at a retail worker, a retail worker is a low paid worker, if, that, if a woman uh, who was in that occupation uh, was to be um, affected by the changes the government is proposing, she would lose eight weeks of her paid parental leave on the national minima. We don't think that's acceptable. In relation to the higher income earners, it's 0.6% of women that might receive anything at that high threshold level, the 150,000. So it's not the high number, but we're worried most of all about predominantly those women on low and, min and middle incomes who will actually be affected by this. You use that low fraction uh, as, a, as an illustration or low percentage as an illustration of people that are going to get the higher double dipping opportunities. I remember that argument in reverse when the government was trying to say the same thing to defend their generous scheme. But, but here's, here's my key question on this. Why can't the two parties meet halfway here? So for example, remove so-called double dipping, but in doing so, raise the government scheme beyond the minimum wage. That would uh, create a good scenario for lower income earners in particular, wouldn't it? Well, I don't think the government's interested in, find, in finding a, a middle path anyway. Is Labor, though? Most of the money that they're looking to take will, will come from low-income low earners. Now, whatever, whatever people say about the, the exceptions, the bulk of the, resort, the, the savings that the government's seeking is taking away uh, from lower and middle-income earners. The, the retail worker to which I referred to would lose $5,300. Uh, if uh, they were to uh, successfully enact this uh, change. Uh, and, and as for Senator Xenophon, and I listened to uh, Paul Kelly talk about his role, well, how does he want to be perceived? Probably as an honest politician. And he made a commitment not to change the scheme before the election. Brendan O'Connor, the figures released by the government on Friday indicate that the top 25% of women currently accessing the PPL scheme come from households where the family income is above $154,000 a year, which is a reasonable income. Uh, how does Labor justify not touching that arrangement? Well, Paul, I think it's not just... Uh, I mean, we're looking at this uh, through the prism of uh, being a social benefit. But this is an economic reform as well. We believe that the participation rate of women in the workforce is relatively low. We need to improve that. One of the ways to do that is to provide better support uh, for uh, women to not only get the right support they need if they have a child, but feel comfortable that they can return to the workforce. That's important. Uh, I, I also always will question the, the, the sort of numbers that the government put together to base their arguments. We've seen it before that they have uh, misrepresented the analysis. Now, uh, it's not just Labor, Paul, that's saying this is a, a concern, this ch potential change. Uh, Deirdre Wilmot, uh, the Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber of Commerce in Western Australia, opposes the change, saying it will force employers to pare back uh, their, their scheme. Uh, and, you know, the analysis by The Economist uh, has shown that our scheme as it currently stands, that is the taxpayer scheme, uh, is in fact uh, quite modest. And why would we want to be, um, um, if you like, um, having incentives for employers not to uh, enter into arrangements with their own workforce? And this will, I think, um, 
this will deter employers from doing that and it will disadvantage employers who have already done so. I think this is a, an important step forward that we improve uh, access to parent, paid parental leave for social reasons but also for economic reasons. I appreciate those arguments but what I'd put to you is the proposition that there is a fairness issue here. Labor might disagree with its extent but I think the numbers suggest that there is a fairness issue. Does Labor reject that completely? And if it doesn't, why not negotiate Look, with I, the I'm government? Not so well, we're happy to talk to the government, but the point is, uh, firstly, in relation to paid parental leave, this is not a family benefit. This is attached to the worker. This is, an, uh, this is if you like, an employment condition uh, and we've always believed, in fact, let's remember, Australia was one of um, very few countries uh, uh, that uh, was not even, uh, they did not even have in place a paid parental scheme until Labor introduced what I think is a relatively affordable one. Um, now, we're concerned that people will be denied that. Now, Paul, you argue that this is all about the top end, but why is it then that the government is seeking to cut from retail workers $5,300 if this is about an equity issue, if this is about a matter to do with the means testing of the scheme. I, I'm not sure that's right because I think the bulk of the savings will come from low income earners.